first I would like to thank the leadership of the, uh, the university to provide me this uh, great opportunity. Um, I came to uh, NUS two years after my PhD. So academically, I, I am growing up within the NUS system. And uh, I would like to thank NUS and the leadership at the different levels and at the different time for providing me opportunities to develop my strength. And more importantly, at the same time, gave me time to improve my weakness. And uh, uh, I, my research area basically is uh, to develop mathematics and apply them to areas of uh, like uh, imaging science, computer graphics, or information process. And the uh, first example is uh, about uh, this uh, uh, compression. So uh, this is compression is about a three-dimensional uh, geometric objective. You have a data for the it's a huge. If you want to send through the internet to the other end, it's, um, it's too, too huge, so it's going to be slow. So you have to do the compression. Also, you want to compression in a smart way in the sense you important data come first. So the other side, when he got the partial data, small part of the data, he, he already constructed, reconstructed the surface. So, so you, if you, then he get more data, he can construct a better surface and go on. And up to a certain stage, see, uh, like this surface, Although it's still compressed, but it's more or less exactly the same as the original surface. You don't need to send anything. So this is called a complex, uh, uh, progressive geometric compression. And it is well known by the imaging compression. People know that this kind of compression, the wavelet, is the best way to do that. And this uh, uh, is produced by, the, I think, the, up to now, is still the best algorithm in the world. And, uh, who did it? Of course, it's not me. It's best. It cannot be. It's, uh, it's done by this group. The group from uh, uh, Caltech, Caltech Computer Science Department, and uh, they are, have a strong group in the computer graphics. And uh, and uh, the wavelet, the, the key point, key point for their algorithm to work, they need to design right wavelet system for this geometric setting. And the wavelet that they use or they, the construction they use is from this paper. Of, of mine, and uh, I, I was very happy to see that because uh, after the paper published in eight years, and it was used in a significant way. This, this algorithm is still the best algorithm in the world. And uh, other related to this uh, geometry data, this is about uh, geometry data fitting. That is uh, uh, the fitting the missing part. This, uh, this is a relatively new result, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, have an uh, application in the medical imaging or medical things. And uh, we use the combination of the wave idea and uh, this level set method. Level set method is uh, new to me even. It's, uh, it's related to the PDE, and, uh, but we combine these two ideas to generate this algorithm. And the uh, best place for the level set is uh, the UCLA. And uh, the group of uh, uh, Stanley Osha, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a very famous. And he's, uh, so we work with him. We, we work with his group. This is a uh, joint work with his group. This is a recent work. And now I, I want to, as I said at the beginning, my research area is basically develop mathematics. So this slide is about my development of my mathematics, and then I try to use those to the imaging. The next time I'm going to talk about this and the imaging. Uh, my, I think developed mathematics, I'm not going to bother you with a complicated formula. I, uh, I have a few principles on frames, and I'm not going to give a definition for the frames. It's, uh, but uh, I can say the frame is what? You can think about a collection of the simple functions, which can be used to appro approximate the complicated function, like uh, imaging. Okay, so I basically this is the frame. So I have a collection of simple things. I use them to approximate the complicated things like image. That's a, that's a, that's a, uh, that, that's a, this is the, the frame. They have a, uh, a great, uh, bigger area, in fact, and there are uh, two major frames people use. One is the cobalt frame. On the cobalt frame, we we have a uh, we call principle, and uh, or maybe people later call it a principle, but it's really a, a few theorem together. They make the principle. 
this uh, we have a, a principle for the global frame. I think uh, this lays some uh, uh, new foundation for the whole, so, uh, whole area. And uh, uh, 10 years after the paper, I w I'm happy to see that 10 years after this paper being published, that's on the 207, there is a survey article for, for, for this, uh, from an uh, expert in this area. He, he said in abstract that this principle driven the whole area for the last 10 years. So then another, another uh, frames people are using, uh, in a, especially in the imaging, that's the wavered frame. That's my favorite. And uh, in this paper, we basically develop uh, uh, a principle which uh, makes the construction of the wave frame. So that that means the construction of a simple function, simple, very easy. If you, uh, in the wave the develop, uh, history, the construction of a simple wavelets with the desired property is a very big issue. And it's, uh, it's a lot of uh, discussion and uh, it's still hard to solve. But uh, with this principle, it become, uh, things become uh, much easier. And, uh, these two principles, after these two principles published, there are many follow-up works that many people generalize this. And uh, we also generalize that. And one of these generalizations is what we call oblique extension principle. And one of the collaborators is Ingrid Dobb. She's, she's, uh, she's uh, called uh, the mother of the wavelet. Her, she make, uh, made her famous uh, in the, uh, 1989. He, she published her paper on construction of the orthonormal wavelets. So, so in this paper, we not only extend this uh, principle, we also join her, uh, unify her construction with our construction through the unitary extension principle, develop a new set of the wavelets. That's the paper. And uh, this principle, I think it's new, but I, I like this, so I put it here, anyway. So, so now, so, see, see, those are the, basically, behind that, that's all our mathematical theory. That, oh, every paper is very long, over 40 pages or whatever. There are lots of mathematical theory. But uh, as I said, my, my research is I try to use those theory, apply the theory to the imaging. So this is the image restoration. What is the image restoration? I can say something imaging like that. This uh, is called a pep and salt noise imaging. It's like like your, you have a TV which you have a, don't have a good connection. That's uh, something you get. So whether you can uh, produce a good image, that's, that's what uh, we can produce from our algorithm. And uh, of course, this uh, imaging restoration or imaging science, that's a big area. There are many people, engineering and computer science, all, all are doing that. What we do here, uh, we, we want to be using our mathematical theory to, to develop a new, new way to do handle things. All our methods are frame-based. That's the frame I talked about uh, in the pre previous slides. So I started to do this in, uh, in 1999. When, uh, when this uh, first paper, this is uh, Tony Ch Raymond Chan and Tony Chang. Tony Chang is, uh, that time he was in UCLA. Now he's the uh, president of the Hong Kong UST. And uh, he came in the 99, and I started to work with him. And at that, that time, I started to get into the imaging. And, uh, since uh, uh, that time, nobody is using frame to do imaging. Now, now this is uh, one of the areas, not only in the mathematics, also in the engineering and in the computer science. And many people using frame to do the imaging. And uh, instead of telling you each what, what I've done in this paper, this is, uh, OSHA, is the same OSHA as before. And uh, we, uh, let, me, let me just uh, show you an example. Like this is uh, one of the examples. You have a, uh, image like that. Basically, like you take a picture with your hand shaking. That's what you get. You blur the image. So this is the using our method to recover. Okay, can I zoom in? Like this here, you, you have a good texture and everything. And this is the real life uh, uh, imaging, so you don't have a real underlying image, but that's what we recover. But if you can, uh, you can see that uh, uh, you can do the numeric simulation. You have an uh, imaging. You have uh, this blur, blurred by this bad kernel. This is a guy who caught some, some operation on that becomes this one. So if you're using our algorithm, 10 iterations, you'll get that. Yeah, 10 iterations, you get this one. 30, 40, when to the 50, you almost recover. OK, that's the, another example. Since, uh, since uh, you have a different kind of bad guy kernel to make the blur, you have 10 iterations, 20 iterations, 30 iterations, 40, and 50. So, so this, this, this also is also frame-based. OK, next I want to talk about this. Uh, this is a really hot area, compressor sensing and matrix completion. And uh, 
It's basically, what the compressor sensing is something like that. It is uh, you people now collect data. Basically, essentially, we are all over collect data. You you collect data that is too huge, then you come back to compress it. The question is that whether we have a better way or more smarter way to collect data at the beginning. So you don't, don't need to collect that much better, just um, collect a small set of data. Same, at the same time, you still keep all the information or all you want. Basically, essentially something like that. I have an image like that. That's a huge high resolution image. In fact, if it, if it were a smarter way to sensing it or to collect the data, you just need a 10% totally same image. So that's the main of that. That's you get the exact the compressor sensing. The compressor, now they have a theory now. Theory tells you, yes, you can do. You can change the current way of collecting data. You can make a smarter way. Issue about the way, and this smarter way can give you small set of data to the same kind of information. So this is done by three people, basically. This theory is, is built up by these three people. I have a picture of two, and the third guy is Donohoe. He's a very famous statistician in the Stanford. Okay. These three people basically already lay out a theory for this new method. This is a revolutionary idea. All those papers published in the uh, 206, but in the 206 in the west coast of the United States, there are so many high-tech companies they already start to implement those ideas. Okay, these, are, uh, these two are really young mathematicians. They are all, both are in their 30s, but they are very, very famous now. And uh, this is a Terry's talk. He's, a, he's a Chinese. And uh, he got a, a few of the medal in 2006. And uh, both of them got the Waterman Prize. And, uh, and uh, Kandes, he just moved to the Stanford from Caltech and, uh, in uh, September. So, both of them are very, uh, not only very famous, they're very, very uh, uh, smart. And uh, I, I, I always think about the other search committee chairman in the math department. One of my dreams is get one of them. Uh, if not only because they are famous, they are great, they are still in their prime time. They may not have not, they may have not received, uh, reached their peak yet. So, so those are in early 30s. So, so now, now the theory is there. Whether those beautiful theory can really turn to the industrial product or commercial product or uh, apply to the many applications, including science and uh, other technology. It's basically, now you collect the less data, is that say 10%. You, you really, you, you recover exactly say, to the same image, but you basically you use this small set of data, you need to solve a set of equations to get the exactly original image. But the set of equations you solve, you need a faster algorithm. If your algorithm is still very small, people will not use it. So now the folks for error, one of the folks, Area. There are so many people in all kinds of areas trying to develop fast album for that. Okay, so I, I divided uh, with the condensed. This is the same condensed as I showed you a picture. And this is the OSHA, same, 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 same OSHA. This, this guy is my postdoc. So we have uh, two algorithms for both. One is for matrix completion, one is for compressed sensing. I'm not saying this is, uh, will be the best algorithm, final algorithm in the world. But this algorithm, these two algorithms, we do provide a new angle to tell people how to handle this problem. Okay, so area is developing very fast, and uh, like uh, this paper has not been uh, even accepted yet, but uh, there are already many, many follow-up paper for this. Sure, they're, they're, they're going to have a better algorithm come out, but uh, the essential here, idea here, we're using this frame idea, and we, we, we do provide a new angle to look at the things and the people are interested and the things are still developing. I think I finished here. Thank you.